Very good morning to you. My task this morning, is, as your TC would have explained, is to speak to you about the garbage situation that we have. And I will take you back to 1982. Georgetown at 1982 was producing a mere 42 tons of garbage. Presently, this is 40 tons of garbage a day. Presently, we are producing 235 tons of garbage a day. So just look at the difference from 1982 to now. Why has this happened? There are many reasons. We stop cooking at home. They have too many franchises out there, fast food outlets, and we start eating about. And we're producing so much garbage because of the plastics that we buy, we take home. Plastic wrapped chicken that we buy. Because as you would know, back in the days, you buy your fish, you get it wrapped in paper, paper, and you take it home. Now nobody's buying fish wrapped in paper. Everybody's buying fish or chicken in styrofoam wrappers. Those things contribute to our heavy garbage problem we have. We're expending in the city $45 million a month. A month to remove garbage from Agricola to Commons Lodge. Now, could you imagine four or five million dollars in any community, what this amount of money could do to your community? You're here today because you're not happy with what the communities look like right now. We are not happy. And what you have to take from us today is that you are an extension of the main city council. You are each an extension of the main city council. You are the guardians of the communities. For carpet waste alone, why are we putting refuse? If you're receiving a once a week clearance, some communities are receiving two times a week clearance, why are we still putting or allowing our residents in the community to put waste on the carpets? Why? We are spending a hundred thousand dollars a week in any group. We have ten groups in George. We divide the George into ten groups. One hundred thousand dollars a week to remove carpet waste. Could you imagine if each of these groups are given this is four hundred thousand dollars a month? If each of these groups are given two hundred fifty thousand dollars a month from this council to do work in your community. Your community will look far better than it is now. But we can't give you that amount of money because we have to pay to pick up your refuse, your domestic waste, and your carpet waste. And we cannot sustain that anymore. We just can't sustain it anymore. You are the guardians of the community. You have to dis desist your residents from doing what they're doing. Because if, you do, if we don't have to spend our money to remove garbage alone, then we can give that amount of money to do community work. Even sell you toil. You toil in your community to clean it. Right? You went down into the drains, you clean, you help clean. Why are you allowing a neighbor who did not come out to throw the garbage out? Throw the, fill up the drains with garbage. Some of the residents do not have a waste receptacle. They have makeshift waste receptacle. Some may have, this morning I passed, I driving down Princess Street. I saw a suitcase. That's their garbage receptacle. It's totally unacceptable. Why have we allowed our country to become it, where it is now? Where is the pride of a Guyanese person living in Georgetown? Not everything has to be money. A monetary allocation has to be given. A sense of pride, a sense of dignity must come from us to ensure our communities is a standard. Why are our kids get, are being more sick now than when you were kids growing up? When, when you were kids growing up, you could have played in the drains, you could have run in the rain. When it's raining, you could run and play under the water running down. I, I used to do that. Any kids are doing that now? No. Any kids are playing war break or playing marbles in the streets? No. But they're still getting more sick. Because when you dump your refuse out, the toxin that emit in the air, our kids are inhaling that. When you see a resident born in the refuse, 
the amount of toxins that's emitting there and it blow high wind side and we inhale it and we're okay with it but our kids are getting more sick we're getting poor because we have to take our money that we can do so much thing to medical bills so you have to look at the rippling effect of unwanted disposing of garbage right it cannot continue and we depend on each and every one of you today that we give you a challenge at the end of this year we do not have to expend this amount of money anymore if we are spending four or five million dollars a month to remove garbage and this is one time a week clearance this money can be reduced because if you stop reducing the amount of garbage you're producing stop buying the can items buy local make your own juices at home ensure your kids go to school with water they don't have to buy water ensure your kids have a lunch pack they can take the lunch to school you don't have to buy these fancy things produce this garbage we don't have to give you once a week garbage clearance anymore because you're not producing that anymore You'll, we'll give you once a fortnight the money saved will be money given back to communities to do additional work you all want street lights to secure your buildings you all want decent roads you all want a play park it can't come with the money that we are producing anymore our garbage contractors started off and let me give you a very brief history one of our garbage contractors started off with a tractor trailer a tractor trailer that if it drives from here to bank of the road over the road it breaks down three times and this was 30 years ago now that particular garbage contractor with the money that we are giving him every month he can afford to buy at least one or two garbage trucks a month and that is because we are producing too much garbage if we say we can't afford it and leave the garbage streets will be polluted country will go in a bad bad state of image our kids are going to get more sick the elderly are getting sick so we just can't leave it as that the other garbage contractor by accident he become a garbage contractor because he used to bring in trucks to people or vehicles to people to buy one day he brought in two trucks and the person didn't want the trucks anymore so he said look let me try your hustle and get the garbage and he's a big contractor now these are multi-million dollars people and they have built their empire on you producing the garbage and us paying them and we still remain poor the council still remain poor communities still remain poor but these contractors are multi-million dollars met empire they have why why should we continue doing that so my plea to you this morning is to reduce the amount of waste we're producing if you see the neighbor is throwing out the, the cutting a tree and they put in the carpet please stop them there is numbers you can call and it's always the parking can come and remove it from you if you put it out there then we have to pay the contractor to go and remove it right it's not fair you don't want somebody to come later in your yard so you have to look at the community as an extension to your home prevent them from doing it look off anybody bringing garbage and dump because you do have people like that you know at mandela avenue for once they bring the garbage from east coast driving down the morning throw it out we don't take the registration number anymore we just see it oh city council got to do it another thing is the same folks that picks up that garbage they are human beings too you know they have kids they have families too so why are we giving them additional work at one instance and they have communities that are allowing this to happen people are defecating and throwing it there in the bins when the guy is going to throw another out it going in the faces they are not humans too man please have your community meetings have bottom house meeting meet at churches meet at groups talk to your residents do that for us you're an extension of council because at the end of the day we will give you contracts small contracts to clean your community so we are your employer too and you don't want to do your work that you would have got done a week ago somebody traversed the area one week after and it doesn't look like anything was happened had, had done so please to ask people in your community to desist from 
corporate ways. We can use that money to give you to do the work. So we don't have to pay $100,000 a week anymore. Stop buying all these canned items and styrofoam and plastics. Take your own shopping bag to the supermarket, to the market now. Why are you buying a pound of tomato with plastic bag here, celery in plastic bag, seasoning in plastic bag, potato in plastic bag? Why? What do you do with all these plastic bags at home? You throw it out. Plastic takes at least four to five years to decompose. One plastic bag. It just don't decompose like that. It buries it. It don't decompose like that. No. So you have. Please, I'm asking you, you. We can't afford to pay this money anymore, and to maintain communities. If we can cut down the money we pay on garbage alone, this is just garbage. Four or five million dollars. Some of us don't work four or five million dollars a year. A year, right? And we're paying that a month to two contractors just to remove garbage. Forget about drains. Forget about roads. Forget about community play field. Forget about everything else. Garbage. Why should we continue doing that? See, if you reduce your waste, if you prevent people from doing corporate waste, we have money expendable to give back to you to do additional work to your communities. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Ryan. So, we have uh, uh, some forms. Uh, we're passing some forms around. I just want you to put your name, where are you from, and your contact details. Just to tell you what we're going to do after that. So, just ensure you put your details. And now, let me just make uh, three other points or four other points before I open up for 